welcome. My name is Monica McMahon, and I'm so happy to be here today talking to you about unresponsive devices. We are going to jump right into it. So what is an unresponsive device? Um, it's a device that's not responding, as the name implies. So um, in visual back now, we define this with a device when uh, someone sends us who is, so who is device 7 or 700 or 7,000, and it does not receive a response saying, I am device 7, 7,000. So my example, uh, this is a who is, it's a specific type of pack, uh, backnet packet, who is device 249, um, and in this case, an unresponsive device would not respond. Okay, so um, we have defined the source as the device that is sending who is device 249, and we've defined the device responding saying, I am device 249, as the device in Visual Backnet, or in some different screens, if you're looking at different things, uh, it will be the responding device um, or the destination, the destination of the who is. So, the first thing you're going to ask in this scenario, um, sorry, just going back, if you have this scenario, device 249 is called an unresponsive device. It's categorized as unresponsive because the source device is not receiving a response. There are a few different things that this could mean. Um, and we're going to work through what those are. The first question you want to ask yourself is, should device 249 be on the network? So we often come across um, a situation where someone can just go, no, 249 should not be on the network because all of our device IDs or instance numbers, um, which are the same thing, device ID or instance number, all of them are six digits. We start with the code of the vendor and then the building and all this information. So if that's the scenario, you can very quickly say device 249 does not fit on this network. Uh, you may, if, if it's a little more complicated than that, if it does fit in with your numbering scheme, you hopefully have a device list and you can go to that device list and say, does this device um, ID belong, do you have we actually assigned it? If the answer to that is no, this device should not be on the network, we have what you call a phantom device. So this source, our computer over here, is saying who is device 249, but there is no device 249. There shouldn't be a 249. It should not be asking for 249. So in this case, the problem is the source device. So don't spend all of your time going and looking for 249 and figuring out why it's not responding, because the problem is actually that the source is programmed or is thinking for some reason that it needs to find device 249. So there are a couple of things you can look at from um, a troubleshooting perspective. Is there does, is it programmed somewhere it's configured to actually go and look for device 249? Is it receiving a packet from someone else and it is supposed to route that packet to device 249? So it's possible that a device, um, and this source, I've used a computer as an image here, but it could be a controller, it could be uh, any device. So it could be that that's a, um, a controller or a router that's receiving a packet else from elsewhere, from a different device, that's supposed to be routed through to 249, and it doesn't know who 249 is, so it's asking who is 249. Uh, so there may be a different device down the road that's problematic. If that's the case, you could change the location you're capturing to learn more about that. If you have questions about that, I can go into more detail at that at the end. So this is a phantom device scenario. Um, I am just going to quickly jump into Visual Backnet. Oh. So this is a file in Visual Backnet. Hopefully uh, some of you are familiar with that. Um, you can get here through troubleshooting or site monitoring. Either way, we're going to go into this unresponsive devices diagnostic check. And you'll see at the top of my file is device 249. So in this case, device 249 had 1,208 packets sent to it, and 1,208 packets were unanswered, so 100% unresponsive. Uh, you will see if you get to the very end of this list that we do include some devices that are partially responsive in here but we don't count those in your number of unresponsive devices. So the number that you saw on this homepage, this 96 devices, that only includes devices that are 100% responsive. And those are the ones you really want to focus on to start with. 
So if we click on device 249, we can go down and we'll see this is the source. So this is the device that sent all the packets to 249. If you have said, no, device 249 should not exist, you're going to use this information and take this querying device, source device, and troubleshoot that device. Okay, back into my PowerPoint. If you have, um, if say that device ID should be on the network, um, it's in your list, it's assigned, it, it's uh, potentially it's talked in the past, and if you have visual backend site monitoring, you'll be able to see, oh, it's been um, sending messages for a long time and then it stopped. In that scenario, you may have a failed device. This is something that probably a lot of you are very comfortable with, um, not happy about, but you've dealt with it in the past. Many, many different reasons that that uh, could have happened. And of course, in this case, you want to go and troubleshoot that device. So make sure that it's plugged in. Someone didn't pull the cord when they meant to pull a different cord um, and that there isn't an actual problem with the device or some kind of misconfiguration. Uh, so in that case, you're going to troubleshoot that device and in Visual Backnet, you can, uh, you'll see it here. Now, if you are in site monitoring and that device has said sent packets in the past, we will likely have some more information about it in Visual Backnet. So we'll know the IP, we'll know the vendor, we'll know a lot more of that information. Uh, if it's a single troubleshooting file or um, a single file in site monitoring, the device has never talked in the past, we won't know any information. That's kind of the the same with an unresponsive device, it's never sent anything, so we don't know anything about that device. And it, for all we know, it could be a phantom device, so that makes a lot of sense. Third and final, and by far the most challenging, I put this third for a reason. I highly recommend you look at the other two options first. It's possible that this message is going through other devices. It's actually fairly likely that it's being routed through a router or a controller, gateway. And so in that scenario, you're gonna to have to actually troubleshoot the path. If both of the devices are working properly, there's probably a, an issue in between the two of them in the path. And hopefully, if this is the scenario, you'll see some different, um, some different failures and Ideally, and this is where it really helps to have a network diagram, you'll be able to say, oh, all of these devices are having trouble communicating, and they all happen to be going through the same router. So the dream is to have a diagram where you can, um, where you can identify that. In this scenario, you're going to have to troubleshoot the path, and that is, uh, it is more challenging, but you may have a router or a device that is um, having some problems, and so you'll want to fix that figure out where it is, identify it. Um, it could be, it could also be wiring problems. Um, it's somewhere between the two devices. This is by far the most uncommon, I will say. Often it's um, a, a source device is looking for something erroneously or a destination device is, uh, is offline or having problems, problems responding. So one last thing I want to leave you with, um, this is kind of a tip, if you, if you don't have a device list, you have no idea if um, a device is, is, is supposed to be on the network or not. One thing that I often do when I have zero context on a file is if a device has many sources, so if you go into Visual Backnet and you see eight different devices um, in this list, the who is a source querying device list, so this one has two. I don't have one with eight in this file, but um, if you have one with quite a few, it's quite likely that you have programmed all of those uh, devices to look at this one and the configuration is correct and you have a device on the other end that's failed. On the flip side, if you have one querying device, such as this 249 device, it's more likely, not 100% more likely, but it's more likely that someone forgot to um, change a default or that device was, changed, was pulled from somewhere else on the network and put there and never updated. Um, so I often use the number of querying devices as a bit of a way to get an idea of whether or not that device is failing or um, the source shouldn't be looking for it. It is by no means is that 100% accurate, but if you really have no other context, that can be a good way to start.
that is it. That is all my information for you today. Um, I will just see if there are any questions. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.